Hey there guys, Reaper here. In today's video, I'm just gonna do a quick test on a few different pieces of video game capture software. So if you run a YouTube gaming channel or you're thinking of starting one, you're gonna need a piece of video game capture software which is gonna record whatever footage of whatever game you're gonna be playing. So I'm gonna be testing out three different pieces of software and I'm gonna be measuring them for video quality, performance, i.e. how much it affects the performance of whatever game you're playing when you're trying to record, and any other minor issues such as file sizes or just any sort of little detail I thought you might need to know just if you think about which kind of software you might want to use. So I'm going to be testing these pieces of software on two different games one of which is Darkest Dungeon which is the just came out of early access actually it's the turn-based kind of indie RPG which is quite fun and the second game is kind of a more demanding game which is Vermintide which is kind of known for being quite graphically demanding. It was the Warhammer fantasy hack and slash or co-op game that came out at the end of 2015 I think. So I'm having good fun with that as well. So I've got kind of a less demanding game and a more demanding game just to see how they kind of, just see how the software pans out with both. Other than that, I'll just kind of preface the video by saying I'm not an expert on video recording, kind of encoding and the exact upload settings, but I'm carrying out what I consider to be kind of a reasonable and fair test on three different pieces of software. I'm not going to guarantee that you'll get exactly the same results on your PC or if you have a different PC spec to mine, there might be a better software, but... I'm just carrying out what I consider to be kind of a reasonable and fair test. I'm not saying there might be minor fixes and minor sort of file tweaks to change settings and improve performance slightly, but this is just kind of a basic average user test just to see how each piece of software works on my system. If you want to know my PC specs, scroll down to the description. I'm going to leave them there. Other than that, let me show you the piece of software I'm going to be using. Okay, so the first piece of software I'm going to be testing is Fraps, and Fraps is probably the most well-known at least of the software I'm going to be testing, if not all the video game capture software that's out there. It's been around for a few years now. This is the only one that you will have to pay for to get the full version. There is a free version. However, you're limited to 30 second video, I think. Uh, you've got low quality as part of that, and there's going to be a Fraps watermark on all the videos you make. So if you're going to be serious about recording anything for a channel, you're going to need to pay for this. It's currently 25 Great British Pounds. So I'm not sure if you live elsewhere, you'd have to do the currency conversion but that's how much it is at the time of making this video. I've checked today. So just bear in mind, if you think perhaps is the best op option for you, you are gonna have to pay for it. Okay, so Shadow Play, NVIDIA Shadow Play is the second piece of software I'm gonna be testing. This is the one I normally use to record my videos. This is the one I've had the most success with personally so far. So this is gonna be part of the test I'm doing now. Shadow Play is free for anyone who's got an NVIDIA graphics card. If you get the NVIDIA GeForce Experience panel, or you can just Google Shadow Play. If you've got an NVIDIA graphics card, you can download this download this for free and use it. It does limit you in what games it's actually compatible with. It's only compatible, there's a list on the NVIDIA website uh, of all the games it's compatible with. However, if you see that option that says allow desktop to capture, if you click that, load up any game you want in uh, full screen mode and you will be able to record that anyway. I'm not really sure why this is the case. Maybe it's they've only allowed you a standard to record games that are optimized for Shadow Play. That might be the reason, but I've recorded plenty of games that aren't on the kind of uh, approved list or games that normally allows you to play. If you select that option, I've had no issue recording any other game I wanted to anyway. So for some reason, I don't know why that's in, as I say, but you can record any game you like with this. Just set it to full screen, select that option, and you can record away. Third uh, software I'm going to be testing is something called Raptor. Raptor is something I've only just heard of recently. I did it kind of, I wanted to have a third piece of software to test for this video just to see how it worked. And, you know, maybe I could have had found a piece of software that worked better for me as well. But so this is my third option. I kind of Googled this, found it. It is more than just a piece of a video game capture software. So you can use this to stream as well. I think it's designed to optimize your videos for streaming on Twitch. I'm not going to be testing that. If you see that optimize setting there, what it does is you can choose to optimize your games, even if you're not recording, just generally, just to kind of supposedly help your games out. You can optimize them based on performance or uh, quality. So basically, if you optimize it for quality, it's going to upset whatever game you've got on that list to the highest setting it thinks your hardware can run while still being able to get a decent frame rate. Or you could optimize it for performance, so it's going to drop a lot of the settings down in order to maximize the performance. I will say, you can, I think it says there in the uh, screenshot anyway, I haven't used that feature. I'm only going to be testing for the purpose of this video just the capture software and just changing the settings of that. I haven't optimized any of the games, partly because it's not going to be a fair test, and I didn't want to change the settings of whatever games I'm playing, because that's going to kind of void how fair the test is. The idea is I'm testing the software against the same video settings each time. And so basically I haven't touched that optimization thing. That's kind of for a different day for a different discussion. So I'm only testing the video capture software 
that comes with Raptor. This one's free as well. Just Google it, go on the website. I'll leave a link in the description again. Just go onto Raptor, download it, and you can use the recording software. All the footage you're going to be recording, regardless of which software you're using, every time it's going to be in 1080p HD and 60 frames per second, because that's kind of the ideal standard you want to aim for with a video channels or gaming footage. You really want 1080p and 60 FPS. With Shadowplay and Raptor, the bit rate I'm going to be using is 20 megabits per second. I've generally found, I've tried a few different times, 20 seems to be quite an ideal for me in terms of quality and size. It has decent quality at 20, and the file sizes aren't too big either. Basic bit rate for those who aren't aware, the higher your bit rate, you're going to get better quality raw footage, but that's also going to affect the file size. You have more bit rate, slightly better quality footage, but your file size is going to be bigger. Lower bit rate, you're going to get smaller, more manageable files, but it can slightly affect the quality of the footage you're going to get. With Fraps, you've got to bear in mind, you cannot change the bit rate, and I've Googled this as well, actually. It doesn't even tell you what the bit rate of recording actually is. No one really seems to know, other than it tends to be, it's argued that it's generally a very high bit rate, a lot higher than 20, because the file sizes are a lot bigger than the other two pieces of software recording at 20. So you just got to bear in mind, if you're going to buy Fraps, you're going to have a, you're not going to have the option of using a lower bit rate. You are stuck at whatever the high bit rate is. It's also kind of a caveat for the video because the raw footage that Fraps use might have a higher bit rate, but I'm then going to be rendering and then uploading in a lower one. But basically, it's something to bear in mind. You might get slightly better quality video, but with uh, Shadowplay and Raptor, I could have set it to a higher bit rate. Both of them got to 50 megabits per second, which is generally higher than people tend to record in anyway, because when you come to render the footage, you're generally going to lose a bit of quality because you've got to kind of render in lower than that. And when you come to upload to YouTube, that's also going to compress it again. So people rarely record up to 50 megabits per second anyway, but you may, just for the honesty of the video, Fraps, if someone does know the bit rate, it probably does have a higher bit rate than 20, but it generally people don't tend to record in kind of towards 50 anyway, just because it it's not worth trying to render and then upload it because you lose the quality anyway. Other than that, uh, for rendering, speaking of which, I'm going to be using Sony Vegas and I'm going to be rendering in the same settings, which is 1080p 60 FPS, but I'm going to be using a bit rate slightly lower of 16 megabits per second just to render that, just to reduce the file size slightly without kind of too badly affecting any of the video quality. So with that, let's get underway looking at the footage. Okay, so let's start with the Darkest Dungeon footage. So this first piece of footage was the Fraps recording. All the videos I recorded were exactly three minutes long. This was to compare the file sizes, which I thought would be relevant in determining what software you want to use. The file size for this three minutes Frap video for Darkest Dungeon was 10.7 gigabytes, not megabytes, which if you think about it is pretty huge. Just considering, say you needed a half an hour video, you multiply that by 10, you're looking at over 100 gigs, considering that's pretty hefty recording. Also notice with Fraps, when I was playing the game, I was trying to call it 60 FPS. I had the FPS counts with the top right with Fraps, and it was continually, in a lot of cases, was dipping down to about 45. Darkest Dungeon is really isn't that demanding a game. It should really be doing better as far as I'm concerned. It just dipped too many times. It kept affecting the footage quality. It may not be obvious as obvious in the footage quality, but... Trying to record at 60 FPS was a struggle. It couldn't hit 60 consistently. It kept dipping in and out, which is quite annoying. Uh, video quality, I'll let you judge for yourself. Unfortunately, due to the nature of this video, the version you'll be watching now, I've already rendered and uploaded to video and uploaded to YouTube. That is going to affect the quality having rendered and uploaded it. The raw footage, I would say, having looked compared to both on my PC, was marginally better than the Shadowplay and the Raptor footage. However, bear in mind it was probably recording at a higher bit rate just due to the file size. So if I was calling it a higher bit rate, the raw footage would have looked better with uh, Raptor or Shadowplay. And considering this is the finished product you're looking at, there's probably not going to be a massive difference anyway. So this is the Fraps footage. I'm going to switch over now to the Shadowplay one. Okay, so this second clip is another three minute video, this time using the Shadowplay footage. Uh, this file size came up to 434 megabytes, so much, much more manageable than Fraps. Footage seemed to be decent in terms of performance when I was recording the footage. Didn't notice any real frame drops, seems to record pretty consistently across the board. Video footage again, seems pretty consistent for a YouTube video. I'll do a little side by side at the end of all three, just so if you think there is a difference, you might be able to notice it. But even just on its own, seems to be pretty decent footage. So I'm going to switch over now to the Raptor footage. So this is the final three minute video for Darkest Dungeon. So this was the Raptor footage. Uh, the file size of this one was 347 megabytes, so slightly smaller than the Shadowplay footage. However, if you've got a reasonable hard drive, it's kind of negligible. In this case of the raw footage, comparing the two, there was maybe, I thought, a slight drop in quality compared to Shadowplay. However, it was negligible. 
Final product you can judge for yourself. Uh, didn't notice any performance hiccups, the frame rate. Didn't have an FPS counter up for this one either. Didn't come with one on the uh, software, however. Seemed to work pretty well, didn't notice, at least noticeably, any performance hiccups. Fraps was the only one out of at least Darkest Dungeon that had any noticeable performance hiccups, I imagine just because of the file size it was trying to render at. However, Raptor seemed to work okay in Darkest Dungeon, no real performance drops. Quality seemed decent. I have a little side by side for you now, just so you compare the final product. Okay, so onto the Vermintide footage. So we'll start out with the Fraps footage again. This time the file for a three minute video was 8.4 gig. So a little bit less than the last three minute video, however, still pretty significant. Vermintide, as I said, more of a graphically and sort of CPU demanding game than Darkest Dungeon was. So I was expecting this, but you can tell when you're trying to record the footage with Fraps, it was consistently now dropping in frame rate. I did manage to keep it generally above 30. However, it rarely hit 60, even when I wasn't in combat. And when I was, I got consistent dips which was really frustrating. It wasn't even a consistently slightly lower frame rate, which would have been a bit better, but I was just getting any time a brief sort of big combat kicked out, it just dipped in quality and you can see it's noticeable frame drops. So a little bit annoying, but that was slightly to be expected. So next up, we've got the Nvidia Shadow Play footage. This time the file size, again for a three minute video, was 435 megabytes. So pretty manageable, nice small file size. This was probably the most consistent of the footage. I Felt like I was keeping a pretty solid 60 FPS. If it dipped, it was only very slightly to maybe, I'm pretty sure I was keeping it above 50. I didn't have any noticeable frame drops, except for maybe one or two very slight ones. However, this was by far the most consistent of the recordings. Quality, again, Fraps was marginally high compared to the Shadowplay raw footage. Again, I can't really show you that, unfortunately, just due to the fact that you're now watching the rendered and uploaded footage. However, a little bit of a side by side comparison on my end. I did think the Fraps footage was slightly better, but again, bear in mind higher bit rate. Shadowplay footage was still pretty consistent. It's I've put it up for all my videos. It holds true pretty well. And I think this is probably the best out of the three, definitely for this one. So finally, we've got the Vermintide footage recorded using Raptor. So the file size this time, again, three minute video was 444 megabytes. So this time instead, the Shadowplay footage was slightly smaller at 435, so nine megabytes smaller. Not really sure why that is, because the Raptor footage was, the file size is smaller for Darkest Dungeon. Maybe it, there's something to do with the way it records depending on the game, but they're both very similar either way. I don't think there's really any difference in practical terms between the two in file size. It's going to depend. They seem pretty much even. So the uh, problem with this one was the Raptor footage was better in Darkest Dungeon than the Fraps footage. However, when recording this, the performance of the game absolutely tanked when I was trying to play Vermintide. It was consistently, it felt like I was playing 15, 20 FPS. It felt like a slideshow when I was trying to play this. Doesn't really seem to be reflected in the footage, but as I was recording when I was playing, it just lost all the fun out of the game. It was just so slow. It was so sluggish. It was ridiculous trying to play in that FPS. If you're actually going to record footage for a gaming channel, if you're playing a longer period of time, you're not going to be able to properly play your game, especially well. Depends on what game you're playing, but you're not going to be able to properly play whatever game you're trying to record when the FPS is that low. I'm not sure why it did this for Vermintide. However, that's my experience. As I say, this is just me doing tests. Tried recording it. Same video settings, didn't change any of the options in Vermintide, closed the other programs, it was uneven footing, and tried to record the footage, it was really choppy. Also, pretty similar to the Shadowplay footage, I'd say the Raptor footage is slightly blurrier, slightly worse in terms of quality, but Shadowplay was by far the best of the three in terms of frame rate, and Raptor, the footage for Raptor for Vermintide was just, it was barely, barely possible just playing the game. The, the final footage came out okay, but was choppy as hell trying to play, which is just not practical if you're trying to record footage. Okay, so it's come to that part of the video now where it's kind of my closing remarks. So I would say my best recommendation I could give is if you have an NVIDIA card, get the uh, Shadow Play experience thing, use Shadow Play, it's free. It ran the smoothest, you can adjust the bit rate. So 
if you want to try and get a bit more quality out of your videos, if you don't mind waiting for a longer render time and render slightly higher, you can adjust the bit rate and get better quality footage. The footage was slightly worse than the France footage. However, if I'd had the bit rate higher, the raw footage I think would have looked better. You can see in the final product, you've got the comparison. You can judge for yourself the eventual quality of all three anyway. But I think the quality I've been using it for my other YouTube videos, quality is pretty consistent. It affects the frame rate the least. The files are really manageable size. Both the three minute files are less than 500 meg, which is pretty good. So I think it's free as well. It was consistently being the best out of the three that I tested. Fraps, you got to drop if you want the full version, which again, too, if you're thinking about recording for a channel, any decent piece of quality footage over 30 seconds you need to pay for, which is 25 quid, not cheap. The file sizes are frankly ridiculous with Fraps. Both three minute file, three minute uh, length files were over eight gig in size. One was, I think, 10.7. It was the first one, which is just way too high for that small amount of footage and it affects the frame rate too much. Even trying to record Darkest Dungeon. Darkest Dungeon is not a demanding game. But even Fraps trying to record that, it just didn't really work well. It kept hitting the frame rate. Raptor worked okay for that, but that then later completely tanked on Vermintide. Fraps just, it take, it's too demanding on the system to, I think, really be used consistently to get 60 FPS footage. Raptor, as I say, it worked pretty well for Darkest Dungeon, no complaints. I'd say the raw footage was marginally worse than the Shadow Play, and then again slightly worse than the Fraps. But when I tried to run it on Vermintide, I don't know why, but it absolutely tanked. And I'm not really sure why that is, but it's not as obvious in the footage, but me playing a mind, when I was recording those three minutes of Vermintide footage, my frame rate was below 20. It was ridiculous trying to play with that. It was only a three minute video. If I played a half an hour video, I would have got sick of it very quickly. It's not practical. You can't play, especially if you're doing a Let's Play. Raptor is not going to be practical or it wouldn't have been for me at least. Again, I can't speak for everyone's systems, but I've got a pretty good system. The other two managed reasonably well. Shadowplay was good with Vermintide. Raptor, just the performance completely tanked when I was trying to play it and record it. So for me, I would say if you, you can get Shadowplay, get it. Fraps, you have to pay for. The file size is way too big, and the frame rate gets hit pretty much whatever game you up here to be trying to play. Raptor, I can't speak for the optimization thing or it's any of its other features. I can only speak, I should make that clear. Raptor's got... A few different features attached to it. It's a big piece of software, but the video capture thing, the precise, the sort of recording video capture element that I was trying to use, the footage didn't work for Vermintide. It was, I'd say, marginally the lowest quality in the raw footage. You can judge for yourself the side by side comparison how it actually turns out. However, for me at least, Raptor didn't work. If there's a fix, maybe it's a Vermintide thing. Maybe that's the reason. Maybe there's a fix on your end. And as I say, this is just what happened for me. I can't guarantee this exact thing will happen for you. Maybe Raptors works better on people, other PCs. Maybe it works better on different, maybe AMD cards. I don't know. All I can say is what happened to me. Raptor wasn't working. So I would say if you've got an NVIDIA card, I think Shadowplay is your best option. It is a little bit finicky sometimes. I think it's only just come out the beta stage where it may still be in the beta stage. I had a little bit of a problem once in the past. It wouldn't, I think a few people had trouble reading footage on their on their editing software when they recorded it in Shadowplay. Shadowplay was a bit hiccupy, but there is a fix for it. And... I managed to find a fix, fix that in the files, but I think it's a bit, it's been the most consistent. It affects your frame rate the least, gives good footage, manageable file sizes. So I would say if you've got an NVIDIA card, Shadowplay is your best option, at least out of these three. If you don't and you can't use Shadowplay, unfortunately, see this video may not be of much help. I mean, give Raptor a go. Maybe it might work better on your system. Maybe it was just Vermintide didn't like. You could try it if you're going to try some other games, but I wouldn't drop the 25 quid for Fraps. Maybe, maybe Raptor is free, so maybe you can give that a go. But I would say if you can, Shadow Play is going to be your best bet. So hopefully you found the video useful. If you've got any other questions about how I did everything or just questions generally about the channel, please let me know. If you want to check out any of my other videos, please do so. The two games you saw, Darkest Dungeon and Vermintide. I do first. I do a first impression series called Taking the Butchers, which I'm quite proud of. Uh, if you want to know about either of those two games, please, I'd encourage you to watch those. I'll leave uh, links in the description if you scroll down. So you want to see your first impressions on either of those two videos if, they, if you found they looked interesting, maybe you hadn't heard of them before. Please take a look at those or just take a look at any of my other videos. Other than that, thanks very much for watching. Please leave a like or subscribe if you enjoy the video. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.